own a car dealership, which also makes me a used car dealer. And today's video, dealer auctions. I'm gonna take you guys with me to a dealer auction somewhere you can't go. You get to come alongside with me and I'm gonna show you how difficult it really is to find good quality vehicles. I'm gonna show you the prices at the auction. I'm gonna show you how the auction works for us. And I'll tell you what, thanks to COVID, everything is a lot more convenient now. Hopefully we end up with some cars, Hopefully I don't overpay for anything and hopefully we don't get stuck with some lemons. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's go to a dealer auction. So hey everyone, years and years ago I got my own dealer's license. It was a lot of work, a lot of hoops to jump through and my dealership grew and grew. Now most of my vehicles are sourced at dealer auctions. That doesn't mean they're bad cars. There are good cars that come through dealer auctions. I mean a lot of trade-ins come get filtered through the auction for us dealers to resell to other people. You can see everything behind me. Some are good, some are bad, some are ugly, some are great. You never know what's at the auction when you get here and today's the day where I get to take you guys alongside with me. We're going to search for some stuff. I have a budget. I don't know what to expect. And to be honest with you, we're at a new auction. I've never been here before and you guys get to come with me to see what it's like. This auction, I'll tell you, is not like the auction I usually go to where I get to go in the lanes and see the cars run. This auction doesn't run their cars through the lanes. So I'm buying everything off a TV screen, sight unseen. So the only opportunity I get to see is right now with you guys. You're checking them out while I'm checking them out. You get to experience the whole thing with me. So without any further ado, let's go and see what the behind the scenes look like at a dealer auction for a used car dealer. Hey, just one bitter badge for flying wheels, please. Yeah, thank you very much. So I get a bitter badge. That's my number for the day that lets me bid on things. Then I get a run list. It shows me everything that is running through today, like what lane, what run number, and uh, I get to go through this sheet and see what kind of stuff I like. Like I can see there's a 14 Audi S4, Mercedes GLC, uh, Cadillac Escalade. There's a little bit of everything running through. I mean, from cheap cars to expensive cars, and you can even see the G-Wagon, the Z, the new Corvette. There are cars everywhere, so I have to go through this entire list to see what I'm interested in. I'm gonna go out in the parking lot and look at them. Now you'll see there's no cars aside from these ones that are like running through the auction and there are TV screens everywhere. So once COVID happened, the auctions couldn't shut down. Business can't end, the, the auctions can't close. We still have to find a way to buy vehicles. So everyone was doing what's called simulcast. The auction was still open, but not to the dealers. They're open for business. They'd take photos, they'd make descriptions and they'd, they'd post them up online and the auctioneer would be in the lane running the cars through, but virtually the cars aren't actually driving through. They're just photographed up on the screen and then me at my house or my office is bidding online. You don't really know what you're getting for the most part until you get to the auction and get to look at the cars and see what it is you bought. Or you could get a list like this. You can go out in the parking lot, look at your cars, then go back to your office and bid. That's how 2020 was. 2021, everything kind of opened back up, but for the convenience of, I can only assume the auctions, some auctions aren't opening their lanes up at all. So all these cars that you see right here, they're going to be run virtually through simulcast. Now I can come in the lanes, the lanes are open for the dealers now, but it's still simulcast. I'm bidding in lane, just like other dealers would be bidding at home or in their office. I mean, it's pointless for me to even be here. The only reason I can be here is to like look at the cars ahead of time or during, or I'm coming to transport them anyway, so I might as well be here. So I don't know what I'm buying today. I know these town and countries, I sell so many of them. There's a little bit of everything and you don't know what you're gonna end up with. I don't know what I'm gonna end up with today. I could tell you like Jeep Wranglers, Mustang convertibles, Camaros, Corvettes, any of that stuff I do well with this time of year. I can actually see a Camaro over there, so we'll go check that out. Now I went through my run list and there wasn't anything that really excited me. There are tons of Jeep Wranglers, as you can see, but there are so many that I can't really walk the entire park and look for all of them. But like this one, I don't know if they're gonna zoom in on that dent right there when that runs through virtually, or if they kind of just take shots like this and you don't see that and then you get surprised when you come up to pick up your car. We have another 16 Wrangler here. Here's the Camaro, six cylinder automatic, clear coat peeling. not really anything I'm interested in either. Hey, so on a different topic, I'd love to get your feedback. I try to post two videos a week. I try to post Sundays and Thursdays and just whatever's going on in my life at the car dealership, in business. Is two enough? Because I could absolutely put out three videos, but I don't want to overwhelm people. 
I have no idea if that's too much, too little. I don't know, what do you guys think? Tell me about it. Should I do more, should I do less? Am I posting too often? Am I posting not enough? I'd love to hear your feedback. Now there was supposed to be a 15 Corvette right here that is not there, so we can't look at the Corvette. I do love Escalade ESVs. I do really, really well with them. I know them, we know how to repair them, but let's check this thing out. Everything about this WRX tells me to run far, far away, especially the pearl white hood on the blue body and what is that a burn mark down there oh it's holes for like a splitter i am tempted by it, it smells like an old diaper in here always acting sus uh nice tells me what kind of person owned this car it really smells awful in here has a very high pressure clutch. Battery dead? I don't know, what's up? Let's see here. Dead battery, so perfect scenario. This car, Cobb, always sus that the smell, I gotta get out of here, but I'm just gonna finish this clip. Everything about this, I can't even start it to hear it run. I don't know if it's leaking, I don't know if it's smoking, I don't know if it's knocking. I have no clue unless I brought my own jump pack, which actually would have been a good idea. So this car is gonna run through virtually, and I just have to hope it runs. I, I don't even know. So there are gonna be lots of dealers bidding on it, and none of us know anything about this car. Is it an STI though, or is that a, just a shifter? Is this an STI? Or WRX, it, wouldn't it say like STI right here? I don't know, you guys tell me. Brazzers, what's Brazzers? To be quite honest with you, there are so many cars here that I'm overwhelmed. Like I don't know where to stop and what to look for. I could look at this, I could look at that, I could look at that. But I mean, essentially I would buy any and all of these cars and could sell any and all of these cars. So I don't know what to stop and look at. I'd almost have to come the day before and spend the entire day going one car at a time, checking codes, making sure they run, making sure they shift, making sure they don't smell. I mean, every single car. I, this is completely different than how I buy cars at auction. I don't even know where to begin. I'm like out of my realm. Wow, that's bright. Why is this so tempting to me? I could do so much with this bus. How do you even get in it? I don't even know. Do I open it? Oh, nice. I gotta, I gotta squeeze in here. I could have so many fun nights with this bus. Do I have enough friends to fill it? Barely, but I already have a limo for reasons like this. I don't need a bus too. Hey, this is a good looking Jeep, 2014, 103,000 miles. Now, like 2013, 2014, they're 20 grand. Jeep Wranglers have a premium. There's a Jeep tax right now. We are paying all the money for Jeep Wranglers. I see another Subaru, but to be quite honest with you, these are old enough that I know to stay away from them. I don't even bother looking at them, touching them. I know as soon as it comes back to my shop, it's gonna be a nightmare of a headache. Hey, that would sell really well in Danville, New Hampshire. Just kidding, but I do love Porsche Panameras, and I think that's the e-hybrid version, which could kind of do well right now. I mean, I don't really know, but if you're gonna buy a Porsche, wouldn't you like to have a half an electric Porsche when premium is $5 a gallon? Here we go, let's see. Key, left hand side. We got a dead battery in an electric car. That sounds scary. I got nothing, nothing. How am I supposed to buy an electric car at an auction if the battery's dead? I don't even know how hybrids work to be honest with you. Do E-charge, E-power, are these plug-in hybrids? I don't even know. I don't know enough about them. I know more about electric cars than I do about hybrids. And I can't buy a car if it doesn't start. I can't buy a car if it doesn't run. I can't buy it a hybrid. If the battery's dead, what am I getting myself into? All right, that's enough. Let's head into the auction, see what we come up with today. So as you can see behind me, this is how the auction works now. There are no cars in the lanes, just people, screens, and auctioneers. So I'm bidding off a television screen with six to eight photos max against other dealers that need cars just as bad as I do. So you have no idea what you're actually buying. Because I didn't go out in the lane and look at this Jeep specifically. I wasn't intending on coming here to buy this Jeep. I was looking at other vehicles. Here I am buying a Jeep Wrangler sight unseen because this is how the auction works nowadays. So if you look here, that's the screen I'm looking at. There's maybe six to eight photos and you can see the price, you can see the mileage, I can see that it's an automatic and that's about it. Usually these screens are on so I can scan the VIN. You can see scan the VIN. So I get approximate 
price and pull like an auto check or a Carfax off my dealer apps, but I'm still pretty much going blind here. This was actually the deal of the day, a 98 Mercury Sable with 80,000 miles. And in New England, I'd assume it was really rusty. I looked underneath and it was absolutely perfect. It sold for $1,200. I'm gonna regret not buying a Mercury Sable today. The dealer just walked up to me that I know from another auction. He said he can't buy them if he can't look at them, so he's leaving. So if you look behind me, there are people bidding in the lanes over here with no cars in the lanes at all. They're just bidding against each other on a screen. The only cars you see are cars they're showcasing like this 911, the 370Z G-Wagon, some lifted cars. Bike next to me is a boat behind me. So these are cars they wanna showcase so people see and they might actually pay more money to have the cars in the lanes so more people see them, they attract more attention. But even still, they're not driving through. They're sitting here and they have to make sure you're on time to find the car in the right lane at the right number. It's really difficult. I've missed a bunch of cars that I actually did look at just because my timing's been off. I have a question for you guys. I used to ride race bikes. Not a long time. What is this right here? What does this do? Help me out. I want this key that's running through, but as you can see, the screen is off. I can't even scan it to find the history. So not only am I not bidding on it, not in front of me, but I'm completely blind because I don't know the history of the car. You'll even see the lighting is really, really good in here, but it creates weird reflections on certain panels on cars that sometimes look like dents. So I haven't bid on multiple cars because I'm not sure if they're dents on body panels or if it's just reflections of lighting. I'm bidding on an Wait, Wrangler Unlimited Sahara right now. Sight unseen. Off I just know kind of what they're worth. Like I can sell it. It's decent. 138,000 miles. What do we We'll see. We don't know what it is. Just around 3,300 with an F is 688. I'm at nine grand right now. I don't even know what I'm buying. 9,600 I just bought. Plus auction fees, plus transport. I don't even know what I just bought. I want to show you something too. Printer is temporarily out of service. COVID has absolutely ruined everything. I mean, I can't even get a slip that used to print out out of a printer that tells me what I bought with how many miles and the bin. I have no idea. I don't even know what lane and run number it is because they used to print out of the printer right after the sale. They don't even do that anymore. So I have no clue what I bought or where it is. I go to customer service to find out. Here's another good example. There's a 2004 Toyota Tundra with 220,000 miles running through. I can't buy a Tundra sight unseen. They say the frame's been replaced, the time belt's been replaced. But when? Was it replaced in like 2008 or recently? And without it being here, I don't know. I can't look at it, I can't find receipts, I can't bid on it, I can't check out the frame. I just have to go off somebody's word and hope. Like everything is just hope and luck. All right, I just don't feel comfortable bidding blindly anymore. I don't know what I'm getting. I am not much of a gambler. I, calculated risk is different than gambling and hoping on luck. I bought a Jeep Wrangler. That's it for the day. It is a 2008 Wrangler with 139,000 miles. I bought it sight unseen. I know nothing about it. So you're gonna see it for the first time, just like me, because I bid on it based off photos and not even like detailed condition reports, which some auctions do. They'll do like 20 to 25 photos with full condition reports. It didn't work that way on this one. It's just like a couple photos and it tells you the basics with options, no descriptions or anything, so I don't know what I bought. There she blows in between those cars. I think that's her. I do like that burgundy color. Now, I didn't know it was burgundy, obviously, and I knew it had a soft top because I could see it in the photos. I don't know tread depth on tires. I don't know rust. I don't know body damage because the photos weren't detailed, like I said. I can already tell front bumper is damaged. We got a big dent right there. Could not see that in the photos. Tires are fair. Wheels, eh, they're rough. Rockers are okay. Why is there a brick in front of the tire? Does the emergency brake not work? Why is it not in gear? What does that mean? There's a buzzing. Can you hear the buzzing? I hear the buzzing. What is the buzzing? Top, mm, medium shape. Bumper banged up. I get some rust down here. Seven day off road vehicle permit for where? I don't know. It's, I would say the exterior is in the condition I expected. How is the underside? I can still hear the buzzing beep slash beeping. 
that is normal New England rust. It is not awful. It is dry underneath at least. So far so good, but you know the game. Will it start? You're, I'm opening it for the first time with you guys. All right, we got a ripped seat. It is a standard transmission. I did know that. There is some noises. Is a noise coming from the door? I've never heard buzzing from a Jeep door. That's strange. I'm assuming the battery's dead. Yeah, we got a dead battery. That's awesome. Cool. Luckily, there's a attendant, a lot of attendant near me. Do you mind help me out with a jump? I'm right over here. All right, here we go. Now this is a 2008 Wrangler, meaning it has the older or the original interior and a 3.8 liter V6 instead of a 3.6 liter V6. 2011 they came out with the 3.6 liter, 2012 they put the new interior in. Now even though it's a smaller displacement engine, the 3.6 is supposed to have more power. Let's see. All right, that's good, it starts. Now if there's a check engine light or any dash light, I have no idea because they didn't photograph that. So far, just a brake light, fuel, oil change, tire pressure gauge. So far, so good. Now it is a Sahara, so we get power windows, power locks. Looks like it was a college student's car because it has a UNH sticker, University of New Hampshire. Does have an April 22 New Hampshire inspection sticker, which is great, meaning it is actually currently inspected in New Hampshire, so it passed within the past 12 months. So that's nice. Now, the emergency brake is up. I don't know why there was a brick behind the wheel. Let's see if it works. I'm gonna go right over that brake. Try that emergency brake again. Put in gear. Yeah, we don't have, we have no emergency brake, but we have a clutch. We have a first gear. We have windows. We have a radio. I don't know about AC yet or heat, but at least it's driving. So running and driving, we're gonna get it loaded up and take it back to our shop so we can go through it. Good news, we also have a reverse. So there we go, all loaded up. We have ourselves a Jeep Wrangler project. I like Jeep Wrangler projects. I know them well, I think it'll be fun. I think we can bring it back to life and do okay on it. Now I paid $10,175 out the door. Now what I purchased it for at an auction, like I was the high bidder at 9,700, which means I paid a $475 buyer fee that's crazy. That is so much money. I don't, that's stupid. All right, yeah, so there are buyer fees on top of the purchase price, which stinks. So add almost $500 to that is what I paid for that Jeep. Now a 2008 Jeep Wrangler, Sahara, standard transmission in like fair condition, done, clean, inspected. I don't know, I might ask 14 for it, which is I think high, but Jeep Wranglers are high and the market is high, so that might be accurate. On a normal time, 12.5. So I paid 10 and change, plus all the repairs, plus all my time, plus our overhead and our costs and our expenses, and I'd sell it for like, I don't know, we're gonna have to find out. So the next video, we're gonna recon that thing, we're gonna bring it back to life, we're gonna make that thing beautiful, and then we're gonna try to sell it and see what we make for a profit. I hope, I don't know, this today was slightly discouraging for me, but things need to change. COVID ruined everything. Everything is more difficult now because they tried to make it easier and I'm kind of bummed out about it. For now, I hope this video is entertaining. If it was, just do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button because that helps me out. To, I spend a lot of time making these videos, so I hope you enjoy them and thanks for watching. Always, I'll see you all later. Have a great day. Adios.